G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and we are getting closer and closer to the preseason. And for me, it's getting exciting. I feel like I've withstood so much of this uh, off season now that we're within touching distance, almost. Like the players are all back at training and we can really, well at least I can, start thinking about 2024 in a big way. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is go through eight West Coast Eagles that I think need a big season in 2024. Now, yesterday, I did do a video on the channel looking at 10 players across the league that need a big 2024 for a variety of different reasons. And today, we're going to focus on a West Coast version of that. So I've plucked eight players that I think need to have a big year. Although, when you consider the broader context, obviously, most players need a big year after the worst season in club's history. The criteria, this is varying. So, you know, some in some cases, we've got, you know, fringe players out of contract might get listed. We've got some veterans who need to re-earn their spot on the list. We've got some young up and coming prospects that probably need to take the next step. There's, there's a whole different variety of them. So I'm gonna go through all eight of them now. Let's start with Elliot Yo. He is one player that I think needs to have a big year for a variety of reasons. So in some cases, I'll be pointing at it from a club perspective, sometimes from the player's perspective. And I think with Elliot Yo, both of those apply here. So Yo himself, first of all, he's in a contract year, okay? And he turns 31 in 2024. He hasn't played more than 12 games in a season since 2019, which is, Damning. That is a crazy statistic. He needs to get his body right. I know that's not entirely within his control, but that is a must. Yo was arguably our best player through the period where we were good. Um, I know that there's probably going to be some rejection of that because, you know, we had Nat Nui on the list, we had Josh Kennedy. And yeah, to be fair, Yo probably does sit behind those players, but he was best and fairest in, I think, 18 and 19. Since then, he's just gone down with soft tissue injury after soft tissue injury, uh, forcing us to play him more in defense. I think in 2022, that really started. And again, we doubled that with that in 2023, and we did see him roll through stoppages. So the reason why it's an important year for him, first of all, he needs to be able to prove that he's still got some football left in him. If he turns 31 this year and has another season where he plays half or even less than half a season, and does that mean he gets delisted or forced into retirement? I mean, not necessarily, but it, as a contract year, it probably will impact how much he gets paid next year. But from a team perspective, he also looms as a really important player because he probably is the best player on overall talent and ability on our list left. The other ones I can think of are probably Tim Kelly and Oscar Allen. Hard to compare Allen. He's on an upward trajectory, but I think on actual ability, Yo is so important to us, but also from a leadership point of view, from a big body point of view. And if he can roll through stoppages, and we're going to be looking at a midfield this year with a lack of experienced midfielders there. So you've got Kelly, Sheed, and Gaff, and that's assuming they're all going to be fit. We will see Jinby through there. We'll see Reed through there. We might even see Clay Hall through there. Elijah Hewitt, you imagine, gets a run in this midfield. So Yo does serve as an important player to at least roll through stoppages and protect the younger guys to some extent, but also potentially play as a bit of a third tall down back and become almost like a gun one-on-one -on -one defender that we saw a late career Shannon Hearn do as well. Anyway, I've talked about him a lot. Uh, let's move on to Campbell Chesser. This is the opposite end of the spectrum, a young player um, that is looking to continue his development. Now, I don't want to place any undue pressure on Campbell Chesser. The contact with him, obviously, is that we drafted him after a couple of injury-riddled years leading up to his draft, had his first season ruined by injury, still had a pretty big injury in 23 as well doing his MCL, but he did manage the 14 games and averaged about 11 and a half disposals a game. So I don't know about you guys, but what I saw with Chester is when he first started playing at the start of last year, he was probably a little bit overexposed, probably a little bit before he was ready. You know, he'd missed so much football and hasn't played that much waffle either. He's coming to the side, looked a little bit overawed, got injured in that derby. I did think the, the version of Chester that came back from that injury looked a lot more composed at AFL level. And bearing in mind, he came back into an absolute dumpster fire of a team. But there were little things just like him taking an extra second to dispose of the ball, hitting up a target. He certainly wasn't as fumbly. He looked a lot more composed. So I'd really like to see him continue that progression in 2024, whether he starts in round one. He probably doesn't make my round one side, to be honest, but it really depends how the preseason goes. What we want to see from Chess is some continuity and some progression. And if he can translate that, those signs of composure to more consistent performances at Waffle first and then AFL level, I think the reason why he's an important player for us is because of his attributes, the fact that we sunk a first round draft pick into him and his potential. And, and the fact that stylistically he's different to the other young mids that we're a little bit more confident about in Jinby Hewitt and Reed. I'm not 
saying he needs to come out and finish top 10 in the BNF, but if we can have a good year of solid improvement from Campbell Chesser, I think that's going to be really important for us this year. Let's switch back to some of the other older players. Now, I want to talk about Andrew Gaff, who played 23 games this year, averaged about 20 disposals, which doesn't sound terrible on paper, but when you consider he's always been a high volume player, 20 disposals is actually massively down on what he was previously doing. And not only that, some of his ball use has uh, left a lot to be desired. And I won't really hash, you know, Andrew Gaff struggling this year. I think it was well documented, both in the media and on this channel. So the reason it's an important year for him is that he needs to prove that past 2024, the last year of his contract, he is going to be of some value to this West Coast Football Club. Now, I don't want to be disrespectful of a great servant of this club. I, I like Andrew Gaff. I, I do want him to succeed. And I'm grateful for, you know, most of his career being a pretty damn good player, to be honest. But he's sitting on 275 games, right? Which means that if he plays every game this year and we don't play finals, he'll sit on 298. I reckon there's a big part of him that thinks, no, I want to play past 2024. And I think he is at the point where he needs to prove that because if he produces another year like last year, then I think he's going to find himself out of luck in 12 months time. So hopefully he can do it. Sometimes these outside types do improve as the team gets better as well. And I would like to see him go to a more defined role as a, as a genuine wingman in this team rather than having to play on ball as a bigger body. But it's going to be a big year for Andrew Gaff and hopefully it ignites the fire a little bit for him in a contract year. Dom Sheed is another one. Now Dom Sheed is not out of contract, but... I do think that in a way, and I know that some will bristle at this because I know people out there I have been critical of Dom Sheed, but in a way, I do think he looms as a potentially really important player for our list as that bigger bodied midfielder, as that potential leader. I remember when Dom Sheed was drafted, I think he was the WA captain. I think we talked about him as a potential future captain of the West Coast Eagles. And I feel like since that, you know, that amazing moment in the grand final, I feel like he's played good football since then. But it has been a couple of seasons since he's recaptured that form. In fact, he's only played 16 games in the last two years, and the form we've seen from Sheed has been a little lacking at times. And again, it's another player I like, another player I want to succeed, and I do think he has an important role for us as this list transitions. As that veteran senior head, and if he fades into obscurity, which is the way he is starting to trend, I feel bad saying that, but if he does and he doesn't recapture that form, that's a huge blow to our list because I think it's going to overexpose some of the younger kids we've got coming up through the ranks. So he's not out of contract, but I think both from a point of view of 2024 going well, like he needs to be playing well to some extent, and also for the sake of his own career because we have such a talented young group now that there is going to be competition for Dom Sheet in this midfield. So I've talked about some of the senior players players having better years in 2024. Uh, let's talk about some more left field ones. Okay, so there's Jermaine Jones, maybe not left field, but uh, the reason I think he needs a big year. Okay, so for the record, I'm a big fan of Jermaine Jones. I think his influence in this team and his development into being a good best 22 player has been really obvious and his attributes has really helped us when we're playing well, which has been rare lately, you can see the way we play is changing and him driving the ball forward with his speed, his foot skills out of the back half, I think it's very plain to see. Having said that, he hasn't had the greatest run with injuries. So the last three years, uh, I had a look and he had game tallies of 15, 18, and 13, which I presume are all affected by injury. Maybe the first one, he wasn't quite established in the team, but I feel like the last couple he has been. I think he's proven to be a great get, but the reason it's a big year for him, first of all, I think he's an important player with respect to our ball movement. And if we're going to be pushing towards this new game style, which we have looked at like we've successfully done at times. And then when we're injury riddled, like you can't really tell. But when Jermaine Jones is firing, we do look like a better team. Absolutely. So he's a bit of a barometer player for us. And he's also out of contract. So if he has a year like last year, but can do it for 23 games, he might earn himself a fairly sizable contract because looking at his career so far, I think he got delisted from Geelong. We picked him up. He wouldn't have been paid much at all so far. So it's a big year for him personally, but also a important player, I think, in terms of the way we want to play our football. Let's talk about Luke Edwards, another player out of contract at the end of this year and his career from 2021, where I thought he, he looked you know, quite promising and definitely had a future at AFL level. He has faded into obscurity a little bit, but I don't think this is entirely his fault because I, I think he has some nice AFL attributes. But at the same time, I have to consider the fact that he's been chucked on a forward flank and played in all these kind of wild roles. When I see clearly a midfielder slash wingman, um, he's played at half back, he's played at half forward, and I think he played on the forward flank against Sydney where we got rolled, and I think he had three possessions. And at the same time, it's like, that's frustrating because he, he's relatively mature. I know he's had his injury battles, but at the same time, we, he played in the forward line in that game. So it is contextual, but I think this guy has more potential than the stats would suggest. 
And I don't think we really saw signs of it. In fact, it's been a little while since we've seen clear signs of that from Luke Edwards. So I think he personally needs a big year to earn another contract on this list. And I hope he does because he's genuinely, you know, one of those players I've got a bit of a soft spot for because I just remember that performance against Richmond a couple of years ago. Maybe I'm romanticizing that, but I think he has what it takes to be part of a good team long term. So this is a big year for Luke Edwards. Then there's the other Edwards, the tall back variety in Harry, who uh, sort of burst onto the scene in 2020, I want to say, um, as a key defender, sort of plucked out of the rookie draft. Since then, he's put in game tallies of 10, 17, and 2. And again, another player we can't undersell the the injury obstacles he's faced, particularly in 23. So his body hasn't been right. If I'm not mistaken, it was him who was at training and spoiled the ball completely innocuously and fractured his wrist and was out for like months. Uh, we've also picked up a groin injury with him at the back end of last year. I think he was one of the players that the Eagles flew to Qatar or something like that to have a specialist look at. From what I can tell, the early reports of preseason, it seems like he looks like he's in good shape. He's physically developed now. And I think as that 200 centimeter key defender, not only do we need key defenders on the list, but the fact that he's 200 centimeters, he's got a point of difference from what we've already have. So I think, you know, potentially he's an important player for us. I think the talent is there. I think he's been a little bit, well, definitely stifled by injury. I think he's got a good athletic profile. I would love to see Harry Edwards put together a solid preseason and get through 20 games of this year. Look, if in an ideal world, right, if McGovern and Barras stay fit the entire year and Harry Edwards doesn't crack a game, but he plays in the waffle the whole time and is one of the waffle's best key defenders, then I think that's enough for another contract. But he needs to put in the work, so hopefully that happens. And finally, Alex Witherden, uh, who is the eighth player who needs a big 2024 in my eyes. Now, uh, you know, on this channel, I've been a little bit indifferent about Witherden, and I have received in the comments, um, you know, questions like, why? Because it seems like whatever the sentiment out there, it's a little bit more generous than what I've been on Witherden. I don't think Witherden is a bad player. I just think he's a little bit one-dimensional. And I feel as though, as a medium-sized defender who isn't particularly quick and historically hasn't been defensively strong, who relies on his kicking, which has been his, you know, his one wood for years, the, even that has been patchy lately. So I've always kind of thought, you know, as soon as we get a few better players in, with it, it might be the one to go. That being said, I will credit him for an improved 2023. I think as bad as the team was, I think he showed a lot of improvement, particularly defensively. He played 22 games, had 20 disposals, but at the same time, he was offered a one-year extension, if I'm not mistaken. I really hope I've got that right. Either way, I know he's out of contract at the end of this year. And my belief, and I think justifiably so, if you're on a one-year deal, it means that you need to prove something in 2024. So hopefully we find a scenario where Witherden manages to really hone his defensive skills and sort of tightens up his kicking. I think there's some attributes there. He could easily forge an AFL career, but at the moment I think he is kind of in the firing line 12 months from now. Anyway, guys, that is just some, some hot takes, I guess. That was a little bit more hot takey than I had expected. But those are the main Eagles I think need to have a big year for a variety of reasons. But like I said, you could probably name 40 out of the 44 players who need a big year, really. So let me know in the comments section what you think, what you agree with and disagree with, any other players you can think of and justify why. But for now, I appreciate you watching the videos. I appreciate you being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.